Welcome to the Work Wonders podcast, brought to you by Asta HR, where we simplify the human side of business. I'm Angela. And I'm Susan. Let's dive into today's episode and find out what you've been wondering about. It's interview time again, and today we're talking to Lisa Lemaitre. Lisa's owned several businesses and is now working as a business advisor. We're sure you'll enjoy this chat. Lisa talks to us about her experiences of running four different businesses over 31 years in business, and we get to hear what she's learnt in that time. So let's dive in. This is the Work Wonders Podcast. Hi, Susan. Another interview today. Yes, always our favourite, aren't they? They are. And today we have Lisa Lemaitre with us in the studio. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Ange and Susan. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming along. Well, Lisa, I know you've got, um, uh, we've known each other for a little while and I know you've got a really interesting backstory and lots to tell us. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's brought you to where you are today? So I've been in business now uh, last month for 31 years, so it's a really long period of time. With my husband, we've had four business, four different businesses in four different industries in the Canberra region. Um, so we've had an IT consulting company, a health practice, an events business, and a, a, a retail and rental store. Um, but I first managed staff when I was only 18, so a very long time ago. <laughs> um, I worked at Woolworths. I had a gap year between high school and uni, and I was only there about six weeks, and they decided quite quickly that I'd make a great service supervisor. So I quickly became the, the manager um, for the extended trade staff. So that was Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday. So I was 18 and my staff were all the 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds. Oh so that's oh where God. I started managing staff. So a really long time ago um, and I've had lots of experience. And now I do, um, now from the business side of things, I now work full time as a business advisor um, with a company in Queanbeyan called Enterprise Plus and we're contracted to deliver the New South Wales Business Connect program. So if anyone's a business in New South Wales, I can potentially help them with their business through that program, um, but I also lecture, mentor and teach business as well. So I'm, I, I'm probably a little bit OTD on the <laughs> amount of business stuff that I do, but I do enjoy it and I do enjoy sharing my knowledge with other people and, and helping them on their business journey. That's fantastic. Well, 31 years, I'm sure you've got a lot to share. Possibly, hopefully. Hopefully it's not possible. I'm curious, I mean, you talked about managing staff right from the beginning there and, and all the different industries that those businesses you and your husband have across different ones. So diverse. Is there something that perhaps is, you know, a theme, something that's the same with managing people across all those differences? I think the main thing is that you have to care for people. I don't think treating them like their family members is, is really the right terminology, but, you know, treating them in such a way that you, they know that they're valued and they, and they know that you care about them and that you're willing to put them before whatever's happening in the business. I can remember sharing uh, one of my massage therapists, so my, my health practice was a massage clinic and I had contractors working for me back in the day and quite a few of the staff would work at a few different clinics around town because they had, you know, wanted to work in different areas or locations or whatever. And I remember sharing one of my one of my team who was amazing with another practice in Canberra. And then I happened to meet that practice owner at a like a training day. And she just came up to me and she started to complain about us oh, and said oh how difficult goodness. she was to manage and and I was just standing there like dumbfounded. And <laughs> we talking about the same person? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the time the staff member had been going through some personal issues. Oh. But I'd been like it's okay, what do you need? How can I support you? Yeah. Where the other business owner was like, oh, you're just an inconvenience and you're making my life difficult. Oh. You can probably imagine that that staff member stopped working for her and came to work for me <laughs> for all the hours that she wanted to work for. Yeah, You know, I think that that's really important. I think we often forget or we get into our heads that, you know, we're opposing forces when we're employers and employees and it doesn't help anybody. So that's probably the thing that I, I take from all the different people I've managed in all the different industries. I think we definitely <laughs> agree with that, wouldn't we? Yeah, we're both nodding and smiling. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely to hear an employer say that. I think that's 
a lovely way to look at it. And um, we're all human, you know. Exactly. Well, look, on the flip side of that, Lisa, is there one thing that's maybe been a bit hard for you to to learn or to get your head around or whatever in regard to your journey of becoming a, a leader of a team? Well, back in the day, particularly when I was starting to build my massage practice, it's it's nearly 20 years ago since I did that. Like I've been in the industry for about seven years and then I moved into commercial premises 20 years ago this year and then I was in that space until 2020, until COVID when I pivoted and because obviously COVID made lots of people pivot and I was just, I'm just one of those people. But it was sort of in the, that probably towards the end of the first 12 months mm-hmm. where I started to really be mindful and build the team and, and b- bring a really great team together. But back then there was really nobody to look at. There, you know, there weren't podcasts. There were some books, you know, there was really and, – and also too it was all very male-dominated. Yeah. So I found that quite difficult to find someone to kind of – mentor me or learn from or use as a role model or something. Mm. So I found that quite difficult. And I think the biggest problem we have in Australia, and most people would probably agree, is the complexity of HR laws and how difficult it is. And even when you're trying to do the right thing and you type it into Google or onto (laughs) one of the many platforms where you can go and that search engine just doesn't return the answer or it returns so many. Exactly. (laughs) And that obviously takes a lot of time away from business people, you know, having to be on the phone or chase down an answer or hire other people when your cash flow might not be great. You know, I think there's few business owners out there that intentionally do the wrong thing. I think everyone wants to do the right thing, but it's so hard to know what the right thing is to do. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. we agree with that, definitely. We were recording an episode just, you know, around the, the all the different changes in legislation and, you know, we would like to think for you all that it stopped last year and that was enough, but nope, here, here's more. Exactly. So, yeah, and I think the policymakers forget that. They're used to reading and writing policy, so it's, it's normal language for them and no, normal terminology and they know where they've hidden it. You know, being a business person, if my marketing message isn't clear, customers don't know what I sell and so they don't know what they can buy from me or how I can help them. Yeah. It's kind of the same. and Yeah, even today we were, when we were looking at the closing loopholes legislation, I noticed that FairWorks got a glossary on their page now. They so do. It's got, it's got these are the keywords that are used. And so it's got things like NES, you know, National Employment Standards and other terms mm. that not everybody would understand. Yeah, because they use a lot of terminology or Jargon. abbreviations and, yeah. Yeah, acronyms. Um, Lisa, I wonder around employee and uh, employees in your team and keeping them engaged and, you know, giving you what you're looking for in terms of outcomes and doing a really good job. What's what tips do you have in terms of keeping people doing the doing and keeping the team really vibrant and alive and and going in the same direction? I think a lot of it actually comes back to when they're first onboarded. My my background in retail when I, when I did work in retail. Um, it's all about the processes and procedures and and the manuals. And I think that that is something that a lot of small businesses do overlook, particularly if there's someone that they've got all of the knowledge in their head and they know everything and they're mainly in, in the business with everyone else. But if you get to the point where you want to grow the business and you want to step out and be doing other things or you want to bring more team on or even step back from the business because You know, a lot of business people have other, you know, they have family obligations or they want to have children or they want to go back and study or whatever they're trying to do Mm. or they're setting up a second location. Having those systems in place from when you first hire staff, I think, makes a really big difference. And it's that induction and, and onboarding and setting those things up so people know what you expect of them, they know how to do it. They know how to problem solve. They know what's acceptable. If you're not there, that they can kind of do as a solution if something comes up that they're not used to and to give them that a level of independence. And then I think it's about just telling them, valuing them, getting them, you know, getting great clients or customers in. You know, I think it's all, I've, I've always been about you take care of your team. They turn up at work. They want to do a good job. Your cu- clients or customers have a great experience. Yeah. And they come back again and it's just this loop. It's, this loop. Like yes. it's not necessarily difficult. <laughs> and it just loops around. Yeah. yeah. We're always talking about having your team aligned with what your purpose is in your business mm. and, 
you know, driving towards your vision and having some investment in what you are trying to achieve as a business. And of course, that all requires being clear about that yourself and being able to communicate that to the team, doesn't it? It's hard at the moment too when often we're managing remote teams. So oh, yes. um, often now teams are remote or um, particularly in my in my, the businesses I've had, I've, we've had when we had the retail business, we had casual staff. You know, I'm not going to be in the business all the hours the business is open. Or when I had my massage clinic, I have people that would work weekends and I might not necessarily be in there or working on days that I'm off. So being able to communicate to all of your team all the, all of the time the things that have changed, you know, probably relying more on technology now. So whether you've got like a Facebook group, a WhatsApp group, Telegram, email, text, whatever it is, so everyone's on the same page all the time. That's really important too in business. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that that leads to a lot of frustration in the team. If someone, you you know, you're not getting that communication across to everybody, I think that can lead to a lot of issues too. Yeah, it sure can. But it's all time consuming too, isn't it? If you're the business owner and you just want to get the stuff done. Um, so how do you address that when you're advising business owners and then like, well, yeah, I could be doing all that, but I've got all this other stuff that needs to happen. <laughs> well, to be honest, a lot of the business owners that I have been working with um, are generally solopreneurs, but not a lot of them mm-hmm. have staff, or if they do have staff, they have really small teams. I, You know, often I think when the team is bigger, there, there's probably another person in the management role that's going to help them with, with that team management. But if you're trying to do it all yourself, it's just, it's really, really hard. And I think managing staff takes a lot more time than people often allocate and give to it. I know that was something that I didn't do particularly well when I have had staff over the years. Uh, I can remember back in the day when I used to do everyone's super payments, it used to take me all day and I only had like <laughs> nine or 10 people. Like it was insane. <laughs> like it was a really time consuming, making sure everything's right and making yeah. sure you haven't forgotten anyone and it's getting paid into the correct account and you haven't buggered it up. Like it's time consuming. And I think that's probably one of the things I'd say, set time aside to do your admin or your staff management or whatever you need to do. And so often you'd say to people, oh, I'll have them, you know, we'll follow up with a meeting or have a team meeting or have a one-on-one or, you know, someone's meant to be on probation and the follow through is not there because mm. you don't schedule it as something important and it's easy to, to kind of slip over. So yeah, I'd say plan and schedule. So that sort of comes back to what you were talking about earlier, Lisa, about you know, processes and having systems for, for keeping on top of those things, doesn't it? It does. So, you know, we talk about working in the business or on the business, and I think it's really easy to get sucked in and spend all your time in the business mm. and not spend any time or and definitely not enough time on the business. Mm. And I know that's definitely been one of my issues Well, you know, at times I've been managing multiple businesses. Like at one point, you know, we've had three businesses at different times. We've done some nutty things over the years, (laughs) my husband and I. At one point between the two of us, we had over 100 staff. So he was contracting into government. He had 70-odd staff there, a mix of contractors and full-time, Like, and that's in a government role. And then we had my massage clinic and we had our retail business. So I had like... 10 in one location and 15 on the other or something. And my husband had 70 plus. So yeah, we had around 100 employees between the two of us. It was nutty. Do you enjoy listening to our interview episodes? As you can tell, Angela and I really enjoy making them. So we're always on the lookout for interesting people we can interview. If you or someone you know would make a great guest for us, please get in touch. You can contact us through our website at astrahr.com.au or via LinkedIn. We're always happy to have a chat about what we might be able to discuss that can both inform our listeners and help you to reach a wider audience. Now let's get back to the episode. Well, Lisa, I know you mentioned in the beginning that you're working with Enterprise Plus as part of the Business Connect program and we'd love to hear more about that soon. But um I know you've worked with a lot of small business owners and like you say, a few that have have smaller teams of staff. I'm curious, are you seeing, you know, more recently uh, things that are coming up for them that they're finding difficult in terms of people management? Because I'm either working with solo printers or they're people who are, they're they're at that point where they're ready 
to hire people for the first time and they want to get it right. And so they're looking at what, you know, what they need to be setting up and what they need to be doing. So checking what type of business structure do they have? Are they a sole trader, a partnership or a company? And then helping to advise them on what insurances they might need or or a mandatory, obviously, with workers' compensation insurance. And then also looking at making sure that, you know, superannuation, single touch payroll. Yeah, so all the compliance aspects, all the bits that that need to happen the way they need to happen. So I'm curious, Lisa, with all the different businesses that you've come into contact with and through your lecturing and mentoring, what's the most unusual business idea that someone's brought to you or has started a business in? Well, the most unusual one um, is one of my, yeah, is is a client. They have said they're in the process of setting a business up to change, I kind of don't want to really reveal it completely yet because they're, at, they're, 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 uh, they're testing at the moment, they're, t- they're testing what they're doing, but they're looking to set up a business that would disrupt the funeral industry. Ooh, I'll leave it at that. My goodness. Yes, yeah, so it's something really different, yeah. Hmm. Watch this space. Yeah. yeah. Lisa, is there something, in the frame of thinking about people in business and teams, is there something that you see is the same no matter whether you're – you know, five or 10 big in your team or whether you've got a hundred? I think it comes back to communication. And then if you're looking at that aspect of it, it's probably the values of the business and whether it's, you know, written on a piece of paper on the website and it's not actually a living (laughs) document or it's a living document. So one of the things I did before COVID I think it was in 2018 or 2019, there's a business up in uh, Cooma that's called Bird's Nest. Oh, I don't yes, know if we you've know ever Bird's heard Nest. Of it. Yeah. Bird's Nest. <laughs> oh, nice. So for those who may not know, Bird's Nest is a very successful clothing brand up in, in Cooma. Uh, when I went up and visited them before COVID, they were the second largest employer of people in the Kuma region behind Snowy Hydro. So you can mm. appreciate how much mm. a homegrown small business has grown to achieve that. Mm. So their store, um, they mainly do women's wear and I think they do some kids' wear as well. And they sell online and they have a, a range of their own labels that they've that they have made. But at their facility you can actually go it's it's back on now since COVID. You can actually go up and do a tour. And you get a tour of the shop and in the shop, the shop's all colour-coded and there's also, there'll be a pink section, a blue section, orange section. Nice. Um, you, you can see everything that's there and if your size isn't there, you go to an iPad and you pull up the item like, and it's not in your size, so you need, you know, your size is on the shelf, so you dial up your size. But it'll also tell you that it comes in red and black and horrible or whatever. <laughs> so you go, oh, I might try, you know, I need something pink or whatever in my wardrobe. And that goes through to the warehouse, which is in the building next door. Someone in the warehouse, a runner, will go get the things that you've just pulled up and actually put it into the change room for you. Oh, my. So you just walk into the change room with your bag and nothing else. But we, but when you do the tour, you get to see that. You get to see the warehousing. You get to go through. They've got a huge postage section. And then you get to go up and you eventually get to have morning or afternoon tea, depending on what time of day it is, with Jane Kay, who is the founder. Mm -hmm. And she's really down to earth and she's really accessible and she'll answer any question. She was amazing. And this was all free before COVID. So it was this amazing event. But their um, values is actually called bird song. And each Mm -hmm. letter of bird, the word bird song has like a meaning behind it. It's painted in huge letters on the wall in the packing room and everyone there lives and breathes it to the point where I get teary when I talk about it. (laughs) Like if they're really busy, they've got so many postages to send out, everybody, including Jane, will come down and pack. You've presumably had stuff sent to you. You get a handwritten note, don't you? You You do. It's lovely. It's really thoughtful. Mm. It really makes all the difference. And everybody in, in there says how amazing it is. Wow, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So businesses need to live and breathe their value. That I think is like, you know, obviously really a foundation, like it's that induction, those processes, and then I think it's the living your values and then also communication. They would be the three kind of foundations. Mm -hmm. 
And then if you're looking at staff, you can often teach technical skills. But as even my husband says this because he builds teams in, in IT, you can't teach a personality. If that person's not the right fit for the team, it doesn't matter how amazing their skills are or how great their CV or their references. If they're not going to fit, they're not going to fit. That's it. Yeah. We often say that too. or hire for attitude, train for skill. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Lisa, I, I know you'd have lots of expertise that you could share with us. We could sit here all day with you. But I wonder if I ask you to drill down to one thing that you would pass on in terms of advice to small business owners in their journey of being a people manager. I think part of it comes back to when you're conducting the interview. Trust your intuition. Like if that person, if there's something just doesn't feel right, regardless of either how desperately you need the staff member because you're short-staffed or someone's just left or someone's gone off on sick leave or babies arrived early or whatever it is, if they don't feel right and you can't put your finger on it, don't hire. Yeah. Because I have overridden that intuitive feel several times and it's just caused me more pain Mm. and more grief than the other way around. And I think too... You can take your time or you can you can obviously bring the person in and give them a trial shift and obviously yeah. pay them for that. So I think that's really important. Give people a go and see what they're like and then choose. Yeah. I think what you're saying there, Lisa, is so true. I'm very passionate about that, that when it comes to recruitment, doing that slowly, <laughs> you know, taking exactly. your time with that. And I think sometimes we just fall into that trap because we're desperate, you know, and you think, well, this person's breathing, we'll put them on, you know. (laughs) Well, um, Lisa, I wonder if you'd like to tell our listeners a little bit more about the Business Connect program. I know that it can help a lot of small business or any business owner really getting access to an expert like yourself um, for some support. So would you like to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, the main thing for people to know is that if they sign up for the Business Connect program, they can um, access a a number of hours of free support through the program. For all of us who are advisors, we all have to have had our own businesses to be, that's one of the eligibility criteria when we apply for the job. Mm -hmm. So you are talking to and working with people that understand business. And yeah, you can work with any advisor in the state. So you can pick and choose, you can pick someone in your local area, you can pick someone on a particular problem that you might be having or a level of expertise or industry that they have. So a lot of my clients through the Business Connect program, I have a SKU for people in the health industry Mm because that's the majority of my business background. I've been in the industry this year for 27 years. So yeah, but it's really great. Like for me, I work with a really diverse range of people, regardless of where people are. If they're close by, we meet in person. I, I do a little bit of travel around my regional area. So I do get out to see people. And then the rest of it is is online and it can be at a time of day that suits them as well. So lots okay. of flexibility, lots of great support. And then we will often know about other programs and things that may be available or we have connections into different areas where we can find the information if we don't know the answer. So there's really nothing to lose by at least having one session. And lots of people just don't know about the program. Yeah. But it's, yeah, we're here to help. And it's free, isn't it? It is free. Yes, it is. Yes. That's fantastic. It Why is. aren't we all using that? <laughs> <laughs> I know um, earlier on in my business journey, I went to the Business Connect provider in my local area and it was great just to have mm. a sounding board, someone that you can throw. I'm going to imagine it's the same for you, Lisa. Any question about business, like you say, they're connected with the local area and different things that are available for business owners, whether it be a workshop or a another program or someone that they could connect with that could, you know, work with them. So, yeah, really invaluable, I think. Yeah. Great. Well, we'll be sure to put the, the uh, link if you would like to get in touch with Lisa and find out more about the Business Connect program, maybe even schedule a call with Lisa to, to, to work with her and get some advice from her or just to know more about it in someone in your local area. We'll be sure to put that link and, um, yeah, go and check it out. Yeah, people have to remember they need to be um, residents of New South Wales or their business have to operate in New South Wales. Oh, great. So, yeah, if people are in another state, I'm sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> much as you would like to. Well, look, Lisa, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for your um, time with us, telling us about your journey and um, the great insights that you have for our listeners. Yes, thanks, Lisa. Lovely. Thank you, ladies. It's been lovely to spend some time with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. 
Thanks for listening to the Work Wonders podcast brought to you by Asta HR. Hit the subscribe button now to never miss an episode. And if you'd like to continue the conversation with us, you can find us over at astahr.com.au. See you in the next episode.